Stephanie, what do you have here? I have a recall bell and a recall uh, food item here for our grizzly bears. What do you mean by recall? So we train most of our dangerous, or all of our dangerous animals here and some other animals as well to come quickly off of exhibit um, using a sound and their favorite food item. So you ring a bell and it just comes in? Not initially. <laughs> So we first start by finding a loud sound um, that's going to um, be heard across whatever exhibit we're working with. Mm -hmm. And then we find the animal's favorite food item. Mm -hmm. So for our grizzly bear, it's cherry pie filling. Mm. And then we start by pairing the sound, <laughs> not nearly as loud as it would be for a grizzly bear, and the food. And then slowly we move ourselves away from the grizzly bears, or if they're on exhibit, we'll start testing um, ringing the bell and how quickly they come in. And the faster they come in, the more cherry pie filling they get um, until it is trained and that we have a very quick response from them um, when the bell is rung. So do all the animals have the same sound or? No, we actually use a variety of different sounds. We have, so this is our grizzly bear um, bell and their recall food, which is cherry pie filling. Um, our snow leopards and jaguars have two separate bells that are actually a slightly different size, so they make different sounds, um, so we don't confuse them. And our lions and tigers have a triangle that we oh, ring for that. That's cool. And they all get cherry pie filling? No, I don't think the cats would be very happy with that. <laughs> Um, so the grizzly bears really like the cherry pie filling. Our cats actually get half chickens, um, uh, half chicken breasts. So we'll take those out and thaw them before we, um, before we do the training. And otherwise they just get whatever kind of meat is in the fridge, which is usually pr something pretty exciting for them. Um, and then our lion, our male lion actually prefers meat baby food. So chicken <laughs> and turkey meat baby food, he will come in and he will eat the entire little jar as we feed it to him <laughs> off of tongs or a spoon. So that is his favorite. Right, thought, like the baby food that comes yep. in a jar? Yep. That's awesome. Yep, they, I, get, I get funny looks when I'm buying chicken, cherry pie <laughs> filling, and baby food all at the same time. <laughs> That's awesome. So how long does it really take you to train them to come in? It depends on the animal that we're working with. Uh, some animals are very quick to catch on. Um, some of them, it takes a little bit longer. Um, many of our animals, if we actually move a shift door, actually know that that usually means, oh, it's time to come inside. Okay. So it's harder to train that because they're already waiting for you and you don't have time to ring the bell. Oh, so okay. if we're training and we're to a point where they can be on the exhibit, we actually have to wait until they're sleeping or off doing something else, and then we take, um, take advantage of that behavior, and then we'll test it with them. Okay. And then so how do you pick the sounds? Uh, the sounds vary uh, based on a lot of times the size of the exhibit and how far we think the sound will travel. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the sounds we have are going to be something like a bell. Um, and it's also a sound that the animals don't generally hear every day or hopefully ever other than during this training. Um, I haven't actually come across any visitors who have brought their cowbells <laughs> to the zoo. So, so far we're good. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Check out our other great videos and we hope to see you soon at your Akron Zoo.